Creating custom items in your Spigot plugins is actually fairly simple. If you're new to Java, then you might struggle to follow along with my Minecraft tutorials. Don't worry though, I have a complete Java course that you can watch for free by signing up for a free trial of Skillshare. This course has around 50 videos and nearly four hours of content that are all designed for the beginner. So if you're new to Java, then this is the perfect place to start. Go ahead and click on the link in the description or in the pinned comment to sign up for free. I'm first gonna start off by creating a new handler, which is going to listen for whenever a player joins the server. So I can right click and make a new Java class. This will be called player handler. And this class is going to implement listener. And then I can create a constructor. So public player handler. And within here, I'm going to register the events similar to what I did in the previous torch handler video. So bucket.getPluginManager.register events. We also need access to the one off keys commands tutorial, which is just my actual plugin that I created. Obviously, you would use whatever the name is of your main class. So in my case, it is one off keys tutorial. I'll call this plugin. Then here I can say bucket.getPluginManager.registerEvents, passing in this and then plugin. Now within this class, I can listen for whenever a player joins the server. That way I can give them items whenever they first join. And to do that, I can first say that this is going to be an event handler. Then I can create a method called onPlayerJoin. And within here, I can now specify the player join event. And now I can access the player who joined the server. So I can create a player object and assign this equal to event.getPlayer. I now want to create something known as an item stack, which is basically an item within Minecraft. And I can then give that to this player. So I can say item stack with a capital I and a capital S. You could either call this IS or item or whatever you want. I'm going to use item and I'm going to assign this equal to a new item stack. Now we can specify what type of item this is. For example, material, which is an enum that has every single material in the game. We can specify material.grass, diamond block, diamond, basically anything you want. We can also specify how many of these are gonna be. For example, I could specify 10. Now I can access the player's inventory and add this item to it. So here I can create an inventory. I'm gonna call this inv and assign this equal to player.getInventory. I can then say inv.addItem which will add this item to the next empty spot. If we wanted to, we can add it to a very specific spot. For example, inv.setItem. Here we can pass in an index and the item. Let's say eight, and then here we can pass in the item. If we go into Minecraft and I open my inventory, the first nine rows down here are going to be the index zero through eight. So the very first item spot right here is going to be index zero. And the very last one is going to be index eight. Index nine is going to be at the top left of the upper inventory and it's going to keep increasing for the full size of the inventory. So index eight is going to put this at the end of our hotbar. And of course, we're also going to add it to the next available spot, which will be index one in this case. Index zero already has a stick in it, so the grass is going to go on the next available spot. So let's go ahead and initialize this class. Right in my main file, I can say new player handler. I can pass in this because it is expecting an instance of my plugin, one off keys tutorial, and I can now compile this and then restart my server. So logging back in, I now have some grass in my inventory, and this is probably not what you expected to see. You probably expected to see an actual grass block. And that's one thing I want to mention is that you have to be very clear whenever you're using the material enum. For example, here we have grass and grass block. There's also tall grass, seagrass, and a few other types of grass. So you want to always double check that you're going to use the correct item. But for demonstration purposes, this still works perfectly fine. Here, the grass was added to the next available spot, and also it was added to the eighth inventory spot, which is at the end of the hotbar. So I've rejoined, and in my inventory, I now have 20 grass on the next available spot, and then 10 grass still on the eighth spot. Why is that exactly? Well, here on line 25, we're going to add this item to the inventory as if we basically just picked up 10 grass from the ground. But on line 26, we are going to assign this specific item stack with all of its details, including the names of the items, the amount of items, and any other details to that specific index. So that means even if we have diamond blocks in here, or we have nothing, or we have existing grass, it's going to completely replace that with the item stack that we created right here on line 22. But again, adding the item right here, which is what is affecting this slot right here, is the same thing as me picking them up from the ground. Now there's a lot more things you can do with item stacks once they're already created. For example, I could say item.set. Here we get set the amount, the data, the type, the item meta, which is actually pretty important. Let me briefly show you what is available in the item meta. So here I could say item meta, I can call this meta, and I can assign this equal to item dot get item meta. Now, if I say meta dot set, here we can set the attribute modifiers. We can set the custom model data, the display name, the lore, which is the text under the display name. And we have a couple other options as well. We can also get all those same attributes and a few more things. 
Let me quickly show you how to rename an item. So I can say meta.setDisplayName. I'm going to call this testing. I can then say item.setItemMeta and pass in the meta again. I can then build this and restart my server. So I've now reconnected to my server. Here we see the initial graphs that I originally had. And here we see new graphs, which is on a different item spot. That's because the name is different. So therefore the entire item stack is technically different. So it will not combine these two. In fact, if I try, it's just gonna make me swap between the two in my hand as if there are two completely different items. And here we see testing just as usual, because of course we are assigning that complete item stack to this inventory slot. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to download the source code, gain early access to new videos, as well as get your own Linux VPS, then consider becoming a YouTube member by clicking on the join button directly below this video.